Hey everyone, welcome to Meeple Bits. Thanks for joining me today. In today's episode of Tabletop Simulator, we're going to go through the game Seven Wonders. We're going to use the uh, version available in the workshop titled Seven Wonders Scripted Fixed, created by user Mark Kukrum. We're going to go through and get an idea of what the scripting looks like so that you can better understand its navigation and usability if this is the version that you want to use for your next digital board game night. So stay tuned as we dive right into this version of Tabletop Simulator and Seven Wonders. Stay tuned. Hey everyone. So welcome to what'll be a two-player setup of the game Seven Wonders. This particular workshop edition does allow for all players to be had. So I'm joined here with a guest just so that we can sit down in the player positions and go through exactly what you're going to see when starting up the game. So I want you to understand what is scripted and then what you're going to need to still do manually on your own. So to begin, when sitting down at the table, the first thing you're going to want to do is select your name in the upper right corner, change your color, and take a seat anywhere on open on the table. My counterpart here has already selected purple, so I'll go ahead and select the red position. Once you've done that, at least two people are seated at the table, you'll be able to click the setup button. What the setup is going to do is randomly draw a wonder uh, for all players that are seated at the table, and in this two-player game, they're going to choose a, a random wonder for the ghost player. So we're not really going to address the ghost player in this uh, video, but just know that if you're doing two-player, it will be there and you'll have to manage um, what you need to do when following the rules for two-player as well. So once clicking setup, everyone on the table is going to receive their random wonder. We're going to go ahead and zoom in, see what we got. We received... Ephesus. Side A. Now, if you wanted to, you could have all players flip to side B for a more expert um, variant, but for this demonstration, we will keep it on A. Next, the things that you're going to manually need to always um, deal out during the game are going to be currencies and then the tokens for victory in military strength as well as the minuses. The things that are scripted is to begin dealing out the cards for each of the ages, as well as rotating the hands. So to take a peek at what that looks like, once you've started the game, everyone's going to receive their player board and the starting currency that they need, and then you're ready to begin. So let's deal, so I'm going to zoom in, so let's deal and start age one. Clicking this, we'll deal out the ghost player's hand and then deal the rest of the player, in this two-player variant, our starting cards. The other thing that you're going to need to manually do during the course of play on the game is handing any currency to other players around the table. So if you purchase any uh, resources from your neighbors, you're still going to need to manage if you need change by dropping the coins into the, uh, into the bags and picking anything out that you need. So in this starting play, I'm going to go ahead and purchase Brick or Ore as my first card. So cards that are in your hand down here are hidden from all players on the table. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the display. Then when you bring it into the play area like this while still holding it down, it is now visible to other players. So if you wanted to flip your card first and put it face down, make sure you press your F key to do so. Once all players uh, have declared it, either using you know chat, voice chat, or whatever service you see fit, then all players flip their cards, pay any currency that it costs, mine cost one uh, coin, and make sure you pay your neighbors if you're buying any resources from them. Once all players are completed, the next step is to then come up here and select Rotate Hands. So automatically, once this is done, all hands are then going to be rotated around the table. In, act, in age one, they're going to go clockwise, and in age two, they'll go counterclockwise. Now one caveat, when you receive a player's hand, the cards are going to be a little misoriented. 
but highlight hovering over them and pressing your one key will set them back to an orientation that's easy to read. So when going through and then selecting your next card, same thing. You're going to have to manually keep your area organized. So if I select this military, let's say, for example, it were a, uh, a resource. It's your responsibility as the player to line them up however you see fit. So the game isn't going to automatically keep track of the number of resources you have. It's not going to keep track of the military score you have. So all of these things, much like in real life, you're going to have to monitor and keep track on your own. So for this second card, I'm going to go ahead and purchase this. I do have the, uh, the currency needed. All players around the table, they'll have then selected their hand. Once everyone has declared their card, same thing. Select rotate hands, and then it's going to go through. So very quickly, I'm going to just going to go through and pick out a couple of cards in each round, just so that you can see what you're going to need to do at the end of the age, and then how to start the next one. So my table mate here, once they've selected their card, will select rotate hands, and round and round the table it's going to go. Okay. Uh, you need to pick at least, uh, I guess, a couple more cards. I have four cards on my hand, four cards. Okay, cool. Looks like we got a little messed up there, but no big deal. And then lastly, when it comes time to um, do your final card, you have to manually discard it. So when you are left with two cards in your hand and you get to that point in the game where you need to discard, the game will not do it automatically. So when you click rotate hands, it will just swap that final card. So in keeping with the rules, all players should then throw away that last card. And then the age ends. So before selecting start age two, you're gonna wanna go around the table, seeing who has any military strength and then resolve that manually. So I can see here that I've got at least one, but my table mate has none. So I would receive one victory token, and then they would receive a minus one. So again, dedicate someone, kind of like in the normal game, uh, someone to sort of manage the currency, manage the victory tokens, things like that. And then once everyone has uh, received their uh, pluses and minuses, now you're ready to begin and start age two. So then come up to the top, very similar to the start of age one, just click start age two. All players are gonna receive the uh, necessary hand size that is required, and then play resumes. And that's it. Once you end act three, or age three of the game, which does contain the guilds, this particular add-on does not do any auto scoring. So you're going to need to do the scoring yourself. So from the, if you look at the uh, scorecard on the table, it at least shows you in what order to do the scoring, but it doesn't have any sort of auto text fields that will allow you to just click select and enter for the players um, the amount that uh, they're owed for those victory points. So there you have it, guys. Seven Wonders using Tabletop Simulator. The ages are scripted, so it's easy to dole out the hands and swap them very easily, but you must still manage and maintain the uh, currency as well as the victory points as well as end game scoring on your own. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Stay tuned for the next one uh, in the Tabletop series. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. I'm also going to include the links to uh, the, in the description to this particular workshop add-on for this game, so that if you also wanted to add it to your collection and give it a go, you can. But anyway, guys, until next time, thanks so much for watching.